and Daniela Geeks, and welcome to Book 101. Book 101 is all about the books that I read for the last 40 years, and today I have my special guest. He's the author of several books, no other than Mr. S.C. Golland. Hello, Daniel. How are you? I'm fabulous like you, Mr. Golan, and welcome back to Book 101. For the last three episodes already, right? Also, imagine so fast. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about all your books. Let's do the recap of Delusions and Dragons. Yes, Delusions and Dragons is the is the latest book. Um, it's a fantasy romantic comedy um if you think the the hobbit meets jumanji you, you you're not far wrong it is my entrance into the self-published fantasy blog off for, for this year um the other two books that we've covered have been the the first two of the the souls abyss trilogy um which is um the dark crown and coven of shadows and today we're we're talking about the final book in that trilogy which is darkness fall Ah, oh, sounds interesting. But before we go to the last uh, book of your trilogy, let's do the recap of oh, the Dark Crown, the Souls. Yes, yeah. the The Dark Crown is the, is the the introduction to this this particular fantasy trilogy. It is completely free if you go to my website, um, segalan dot com. It is it will remain free, um, certainly for as long as 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 I can keep it that way. Um, it introduces us to a, a magical world of um, good versus evil, and a family or two families actually caught in the the midst of a a very large conflict and war between um, the forces of good and the forces of evil. Um, the, the Dark Crown very much sets the the tone and introduces us to our key characters. Um, it's been it was very well received. It was a semi finalist in the self published fantasy blog off back in uh, SPFB 6 and it was also a semi finalist in the book blog of novel of the year back in twenty twenty. Um, the second book in the series, Coven of Shadows, is very much the my my favourite of the of the three um, because it's a bit like the it's a bit like. Um, the Empire Strikes Back in the first Star Wars trilogy, and that it is darker. It does introduce us to the the other side of things and the the other family that are struggling um, to kind of make their way in the world and, and achieve what they want to achieve. Um, the last book in the series, which is Darkness Falls, is is very much the the pulling together of a, a lot of activity and a lot of running around trying to find magical items and negotiation and daring escapes and prison and treachery. Um, and there are a couple of surprises as far as people are not exactly who we believe them to be. Yes, indeed. And congratulations for your... Yeah, the well, strangely, um, Dilly was actually in the top 10 for Amazon free books this week, which was really, really nice in the, the category of contemporary fiction. So, yeah, I was very, very pleased and very surprised by that. So it's um, it's done very well. It's 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 found a lot of new readers this week. So um, what, what I'm hoping is that it will with, with the Dark Crown now being free um, pretty much permanently, that will introduce a lot of people to a a really good fantasy series that hopefully they they can get into and and really get to to know and love and explore as well. So, Mr. Golan, let's talk about Darkness Falls. What's behind the title of the third trilogy of your salsa beats? Well, it's it's a bit of a play on words, Daniel. Um, as is always the way in that darkness falls could be interpreted one of two ways. It could either be seen as darkness fails or that darkness falls across the land. So it it um, very much leaves things a little bit ambiguous about exactly what is going to happen. Um, and the the 
the main thing with this book is that everything come starts to come together so we're, we're kind of the end is near souls and kingdoms are falling into darkness and three heroes must sort of fight off the shadows and restore light to the world so it it, it very much is about what happens to our main our our protagonist um um our hero Kaelden and and his two daughters um because things will things will have happened will things have happened to them in the first two books and there's been a, a couple of surprises and some things have not gone quite as they expected but equally we've we've had a couple of secrets revealed and um we've we've met our main bad guy um and we found out what they're wanting to do and it it took to Kaelden to sort of um escape from the situation he finds himself in to to actually say save himself save his family and save the world which is which is quite a lot for to, to achieve it, it was it was it was very hard because um i didn't really know how i wanted to end it to be honest with you i i ended up writing the two-thirds of the book and then spent sort of the same amount of time just writing the final third because i i changed my mind a lot about what i wanted to happen um and there was um i ended up having to make a, a couple of really difficult decisions that i didn't expect as far as um how things went and who lived and who died and the, there were a couple of deaths at the end of this book that i didn't i almost didn't want to do um but it was when when I, I spoke to somebody who I really trusted um, and asked them for their input, they convinced me that I had to go down a certain path and I had to do certain things to to make it um, raise the stakes and, you know, everything's on the line and a couple of people are introduced into the story and a couple of them don't survive and and there are definitely some surprises about how that works and and who lives and who dies at the end of it because what what you don't want is everything to be straightforward you want a bit of mystery and a bit of uncertainty and certainly the reviews of of, of people that have read it have said that they they really wanted um you know it it, it is a, a huge epic you know the, the one somebody said the final confrontation is an epic battle that rivals anything in fantasy now i i couldn't be happier with that kind of that kind of feedback and it, and it was recommended as kind of a a must read by one particular um fantasy blogger so yeah it was very very difficult to write but um much as i was re reluctant to do to kill off certain people at the time with the benefit of a bit of bit of time away from it it was absolutely the right thing to do when you wrote darkness falls what is your main struggles um my main struggle was that i, I wanted to to end things on a satisfactory note you, you don't want to spend a lot of time reading three big books just to have the ending be rubbish or or not satisfying it needed to have um a level of of satisfaction to it because you can write a book and then when you get to the third one the ending is disappointing or doesn't quite isn't isn't as as interesting or or as fun or um as as grand or as epic as you would think it would be the the difficulty with this one was that i didn't want to just finish write the third book and that would be the end of it because i've, I've got plans to write 12 books in total um, so I needed needed to leave some things unexplained, and I needed to to close some things off, just to give a, a level of satisfaction, but to leave enough yet to be determined or or yet to be decided to to get people into the the next the next uh, trilogy, which I'm I'm working on at the moment. So yeah, it is it's about striking that balance of of closing things off, but also leaving a couple of things for people to get excited about and to look forward to, to reading about in the future. Yes, indeed. So darkness falls. If you describe in a five adjectives, what are they? Oh, that's a very good question. It's, um, it's um, wild, adventurous, surprising, um, mysterious and dark. Oh, very well said, Mr. Gallen. So darkness falls. How did you craft it? Um, I I crafted it um with with an idea in mind about what was to happen because the 
the the the way that book two ends that we we find our our heroes and our and the heroes and the villains at the start of the third book are in a are in a place that they don't expect in that there are complications and and events happened at the end of book two that they didn't plan for um and very much the the we find a couple of our a couple of our heroes doing roles that they're not used to so um what 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 we what we find particularly with the two sisters is that that one has has taken a certain path um and the and the the younger sister has taken a different path but they're they're both completely out of their depth they're both completely in in worlds that they're not familiar with they're not comfortable with they're not happy with um and they've got to find their way through it so it is very much a um a difficult situation for them to navigate and, and equally for both of the fathers in the story they're very much um dealing with things that they've never had to deal with before so it, it is a tale of struggle and adapting and um making sure that you know each family looks after itself and, and equally they've got to balance that against the uh, the bigger harder task of, of trying to save the world or take over the world very well said, Mr. Gullen. But before we go on, I want to shout out to the people listening. My uh, my top ranking in the last 30 days, according to my Apple chart. In Zambia, I got number eight. Thank you so much for putting me on the number eight spot on the Apple chart. Mongolia at number 34. Pakistan at number 44. Cameroon at number 71. Fiji at number 73, Canada at number 35, United Arab Emirates at 143, Libya at 145, United Kingdom at 167, Algeria at 188, Georgia at 203, Vietnam at 204, Jordan at 244, Rwanda at number 46, Nigeria at 70, United Republic of Tanzania at number 92. Thank you so much for supporting this podcast because this podcast is created in power writers all over the world like Mr. S.C. Golland. So Mr. Golland, Darkness Falls, what is the best highlight? The best highlight? That's a, that's a, that's a difficult question. It's like asking me to choose my favourite my favorite drink or my favorite child um <laughs> the, the the i think there is it i think it's the there's a twist there's a there's a huge twist within the um within the book that i i wrote and it completely fl- it completely catches most people out and it was and it was something i didn't expect to in- to include i didn't include it within the original outline and it was just something that came to me one afternoon and it very much it it, it makes everything harder everything more difficult everything has greater stakes there's more there's more at risk um because of this particular twist and and it was it was unexpected, but it was very, very satisfying to write. And I realise I'm not saying a huge amount about what it is, but I don't want to ruin the surprise for people. But yeah, definitely. When when you read the story, you will get to a certain bit and you, hopefully you will go, ah, I never saw that coming. Well, that that's the bit that was the most fun to write. Yes, indeed. So we are talking about the highlights. Can we talk about the flaws? The flaws. Well, the, the the flaws of this book are um, that really you've got to have read the first two to understand where everything comes from. So it's not one of those books that you can just pick up as a standalone. It's there's a, there's a lot within it that um, you 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 need to know the background to it. I mean, I, I I haven't done a pre a, a prologue at the start to sort of say previously this has happened and this has happened. It is hinted at within the book um, in bits, but yeah, to fully appreciate how good Darkness Falls is, um, it's you you very much have to sort of um, have read the first two, but it it is worth it. I mean, one review said in in Darkness Falls, S. C. Gowland sends his characters to unknown and well imagined parts of his world, all richly described, and hold, it holds together with brilliant characters and emotional camaraderie and tension. 
There are things that you won't see coming and he manages to wrap up the series in an utterly satisfying fashion that will leave you breathless and just a little bit stunned. So um, obviously somebody enjoyed it a great deal um, and I hope anybody who reads the book will, will find the same sort of joy. Let's talk about the main character of Darkness Falls. Well, the, the, the main characters in Darkness Falls, like I say, are, are Kaelden, who's, who's the dad, um, and he has he has two daughters called Ramina and Zahara, and they've both they've both um, they've got back together, and they've been sort of torn apart and and forced into into different circumstances. So, at the moment, um, Kaelden is very much sort of trying to escape from um, a prison in which he's he's held at the moment. Um, so he's he's got he he has a huge amount of fun doing that because he's he being a good guy you good guys don't tend to have much experience of spending time in prison but equally his um his two children his two daughters have a huge amount of things to sort out for themselves one of them's on the run the other one is is very much been captured and is, and is very much fighting for her life in the in that environment the flip side is that the um our our bad guy or our main bad guy has has, has family problems of his own in that um he's sort of struggling to deal with a, a very disobedient daughter and a son who has ambitions of, of taking over and trying to replace his father um as, as sort of king of the king of the of the bad guys really so yeah it is it is about difficult children in a lot of ways <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome, Mr. Gallen. So how did you connect the Darkness Falls to Carven of Shadows? Well, what, what tends to happen is at the end of Coven of Shadows, we the, the the way that the trilogy works is at the end of the end of end of book one, at the end of the Dark Crown, the second book immediately is is kind of set literally one second later so it, it's 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 instantaneous the difference between coven of shadows book two and darkness falls which is book three is that a period of time has passed that we we've we've had sort of a a number of months um of past and and certain things have changed and the environment has changed and there's been a shift in the the power dynamic in that um people that were was supportive um, are now not in a position to be as influential, and and to a certain extent, Kaelden has to to learn who to trust and who not to trust all over again because the people he would normally go to um, are not are not there anymore, um, either because circumstances have changed or or they've they've met a, a nasty ending. So it is it is about re rediscovering things. Um, from from the point of view of who you can trust and who you can't trust and sometimes perhaps looking at looking at somebody and thinking that you understand what motivates a person but finding when it actually comes down to it that they're actually motivated um and their intentions are completely different to to what you thought they were yes so the trilogy uh, itself souls of the abyss which uh which books did you like that? Um, my my favourite book is this is the second. Um, Coven of Shadows is absolutely my 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 favourite of the three, um, because everything gets turned on its head. Everything gets deeper and and darker and more dramatic um, and and more fun as well. Because um, fun is one of those things that, that I, I wanted to have within the book, not to make it all all dark and doom and gloom and, and depressing. I wanted to have bits of fun. Um, particularly within when you when you get sort of good friends together on adventures they will laugh and joke at each other they will they will sort of torment each other out of affection um it's it's a it's a a, a difficult thing to do but certainly darkness falls is is the darkest out of the whole three um but the the ending is is huge i mean it takes up about a third of the whole book so it's it's 120 pages of you know 40,000 words well close to 50,000 words of of huge amounts of twists and turns and excitement and magic and um things that hopefully people will will enjoy 
Yes, people love support Mr. S.C. Gollin. So this, the second book was the fastest written, definitely, because um, I had a clear plan with that one about exactly what I wanted to do with it and the content and the direction I wanted and, and the things that I wanted to achieve. The, the first book was the longest because um, it took me a long while to actually sit down and get on with it. The, the third book, um, Darkness Falls, was I could have finished it a lot quicker. Um, but like I say, because I I got two thirds of the way in and then stopped because I the ending that I had wasn't good enough, and I I kind of realised that as I was writing it and rereading it and this sort of thing, and I I, I had a few ideas about what I wanted to do, um, but they weren't good enough to be honest, Daniel. And what I what I didn't want to do was put out a third book that was rubbish, so I I took my time and I I delved deeper um that that was always the, one of the best bits of writing advice i ever i ever came across was when you when you come across a problem go deeper um go more into it make it make it harder find out what is the what are the reasons what are the motivations you know it's it's the three whys why are they doing it well why are they doing it and why are they doing it so um the more depth you you go to the the more interesting it is but also the 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 more correct you've got to make it from the point of view of, of being able to pull all of the all of the strands of the previous two books together in a satisfying manner so the third book was definitely the longest to write just because i wanted to make the ending as good as possible so the darkness falls if you want to go back and revise itself which part of the book you want to revise oh um there is let me think there is there's one there is a, there's a really interesting dynamic between um the between Kaelden um who's our hero and the the daughter of the main bad guy um and the the relationship that develops between the two of them was really unexpected and it was actually one of the most interesting things is the the positivity that um and the influence that kindness can have on people who have never really experienced kindness and support and empathy and compassion so I would have probably liked to have delved more into that particular relationship because it 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 starts in book two, but it really really develops in book three, um, and it's yeah, there's there, there was a relationship there that I I I really fell in love with and was a real surprise that it it became so important and so so interesting. So I suppose if I was going to go back and do anything with darkness falls I, I would dig more into that particular relationship very well said mr gallon so darkness falls which chapter you enjoyed the most which chapter did i, did I enjoy the most oh you're, you're asking difficult questions now daniel it's <laughs> um there was there's a chapter called the impossible um which is if my memory serves, was one of those one of those chapters that just really, really, really um, had quite an emotional effect on me, to be honest with you, because it was it was it was unexpected the way that that particular chapter went, um, and it yeah, there's there's a there's a re there's a reunion. Um, that doesn't quite go according to plan. So there was a couple of moments that are shared between Kaelden and a couple of the people that he's he 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 sort of his his best friends, um, and he's he's reunited with somebody that he he hasn't met before, and he's introduced to a character who who casts further doubt on what has been going on. Um, and this sort of thing. And, and at the end of that particular chapter, um, Kaelden sort of makes a decision that will have, that, that is the hardest he will ever have to make. Um, so that's that's why it's called the impossible, because the thing that is asked of him, the task that is required of him is to do something that he, he, he never thought he would be able to do, hence why it is impossible. 
Yes, amazing, Mr. Gollum. So before we go on, I want to invite you to listen to my other podcast, Food 101, on our third season with Chef Alessandro, one of the best executive chefs in one of the best restaurants in downtown Toronto. So please do listen to our latest episode. We talk about espanol sauce. So you are wondering how to make espanol sauce. So please do listen to our latest episode, Food 101. And we are so grateful because we got our 1 million downloads. So please do listen. If you are supporting my Food 101, can you please support my Book 101 review too? to uh, get more downloads because this podcast is created to empower writers all over the world. Plus one more, my Food 101 Volume 1 is out already, so please grab a copy. This is all my 100 episodes of my first season, and it's all about food, 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 people, the basic fundamental in the kitchen that you need to know when you are cooking so please do grab a copy available on amazon and leading online bookstores worldwide plus i got my volume two so please do buy those together volume one and volume two so mr Golland, can you please invite our listeners to buy all your books well, obviously, anyone that listens to your fantastic podcast, Daniel, is a person of really good taste. So, um, I will, I w- what I will say is that um, I will make a deal with people, which is um, I'm I'm willing to bet that anybody who, who downloads the first book and enjoys the first book, um, which is completely free, so there's no there's no cost to anybody. Um, will enjoy all of the others within the series because my my first book was very much my my toe in the water it was it was my first real attempt at writing a book and since then i've 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 written a total of five and i've written over half a million words and i've i've got really good at what i'm doing um i've i've developed i've i've got better as i've gone along the stories have got have have provided more depth have, have had more have been fun and exciting and like i say i mean it, it is a a, a dubby, double semi finalist um and it it, it is the, the 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 highest compliment i can give it is that these are the bo- i wrote the books that i wanted to read these are the kind of books that i fell in love with um as as a as a big fan of fantasy of of wanting weird and wonderful things to happen that were engaging and fun and scary and exciting and and made you question what you would do in that sort of a situation so what i've what i would suggest is that the the souls abyss trilogy is is very much about connections and family and and what what you would do and the moral questions of what would you do to keep your family safe um they they are character driven books they are not books about circumstances that are insignificant this is this is about people going through difficult circumstances and having to readjust to the world as as it goes in a direction that they didn't expect or 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 were not comfortable with so um i really loved writing the the, the souls of this trilogy because it was it it's my kind of book it's it's big and it's bold and it's exciting and and like I say the re- the reviews have been ridiculously kind. Um, you know, other people have said definitely recommend this book because it has everything you could possibly want from a fantasy book. So I'm I'm obviously keeping pure, and and these are hardcore fantasy fans that can be very very difficult to please sometimes. They they like what they found and you can get the whole set available on amazon for less than five five pounds or five dollars so it's not often you can say you can get that sort of value for money yes indeed and according to a fantasy book nerd a satisfying wrap-up of a great series oh so what are the elements that you put in the darkness falls that your readers is not appointed i i put I put 
high stakes. In other words, a, a lot. A, if, in other words, if things if things go wrong, they go wrong in a big way. There's there's not there's you know it's the fate of the world here. It's the fate of loved ones. It's the fate of families. It's the fate of of not just life and death, but things that are far more important, like the the way that the a country will head from the point of view of will it head into darkness? Will it head into war? Will it head into a an age of prosperity and peace? Um, can you ever truly get rid of um, an idea that, you know, things can be done a different way and, you know, is dictatorship better than democracy? Do you, do you need those kind of structures in place? And the, all, the other side of it is that sometimes you can't bury history. History does come back and has, has an impact in a way that was never intended at the time, but history, history inspires and history makes people do things and, and they're fascinated by it and you can learn a lot from history and, and what you don't want is to repeat the mistakes of history so one of the things within this is that the we're wanting to have a return to the old times a times that, that were seen as, as being better by some people but not everybody agreed so it's the the stakes are huge um but it's fun at the same time because you've got a group of people that hopefully you care about. You've got a family that is, is looking to stay together in a different way. Um, but somebody will lose. Somebody has to be disappointed. Um, and sometimes you can win, but still lose, but equally sometimes you can lose, but still win. So, um, but, and the other thing is sometimes you can lose absolutely everything. So it is about that that the stakes of having something worth fighting for that you believe in wholeheartedly. I think people that is our food of thought for the day. <laughs> That's the awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, Mr. Golan. Very well said. But thank you for your time, Mr. Golan. Thank you very much, Daniel. Body people. See you soon. <laughs>